Well, greetings and salutations, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well today. Today, I have just an absolute terrifying experience shared with us before we jump into it a couple links. As many of you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, and channel membership is in the description below. Merch is displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support the channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe, it does not cost a cent. Click the like button, takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon and folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because all these things really do help the channel to continue to grow and go. And yes, folks, they definitely matter. Now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's jump in to today's upload, shall we? This next experience I'm going to share with you was shared with me by a gentleman who had talked to a subscriber. <clears throat> he was talking just recently about um, conspiracy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. He's not into the cryptid field. He really is interested in like the Bill Cooper stuff. Uh, Phil Schneider and that stuff. He <clears throat> has a brother-in-law who was or still is in law enforcement and his wife wanted to have her brother's experience shared. They contacted him uh, before contacting me and got the a-okay on that. Uh, hopefully, I did say, you know, if ever he would like to talk with me, I would be more than interested in talking with him. Um, so, we will, I'm going to use aliases on the three people that this stems around. Chris will be the husband Sarah is the wife and sister of Benjamin. Um, he is a former um, Nebraska State Patrol. And this took place in 2019. So in the region between broad water in Oshkosh, um, Nebraska, Route 26, a game warden from the Southwestern Division was going out towards the Crescent Lake National Wild Refuge. And <clears throat> out in that area, there's a kind of a rural route called 181 that leads out into this just very interesting kind of area, very void of any kind of human life. You know, there's no mini malls, there's no houses, there's very little farms. Um, actually, there is no farms out that way. And there's about 10 lakes that just all kind of set aside from each other. So this game warden had noticed a tractor trailer um, heading towards Crescent and Blue Lake via 181, which in itself is strange because... 
<clears throat> there are, like I said, no kind of businesses out there that would require a tractor trailer. Him being a game warden uh, has patrolled that area quite often and has never seen a tractor trailer out that way. Just randomly out of the blue, very strange. <clears throat> As he's kind of watching this truck, he's behind it, he contacts the highway patrol and they send someone out. He notices that the tractor trailer has government license plates. So the highway patrol stops and speaks with the game warden. He says, all right, I will handle this. Um, thank you. You know, you don't need to proceed anymore. It's pretty much out of your jurisdiction. I'll figure out what's going on. And, uh, you know, you had to what you were going to do. So he ends up stopping this truck um, that had pulled off of 181 onto this dirt road. And that dirt road pretty much goes along the shore of Island Lake. And it's a, a very, very isolated area. Benjamin had, like his brother-in-law, they're both interested in UFO, um, the, I hate saying the word conspiracy because it's not, but they're into that kind of topic of, you know, deep underground military bases, uh, not really cryptids, not really the paranormal, but the high strange, either way you look at it. And through the years of his reading and research and such, he had heard that there is supposedly a deep underground military base in that part of Nebraska somewhere. And he's always thought that it was in that kind of area. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you Google search this area in between... Um, Broadwater and in Oshkosh and north of it where the um, where this Crescent Lake National Wildlife Refuge is you can see it is void and the map that has the dumb dumps on it and tunnel systems on it um, it sits kind of right in that area. And uh, Chris sent me the map. I've had, I have a copy of the map, um, but he sent me a copy, the one that I'm going to share with you guys at the end of this. <clears throat> so this whole time, um, Benjamin has been very interested in researching these doms and such. And throughout his time as a patrol <clears throat> as a patrol officer sorry guys my throat is all messed up um as a patrol officer he has always thought that there was a dumb entrance out that way um curious about what was up so he radios in to his substation, hey, I've got this tractor trailer. It's got government plates. Um, I'm going to stop the truck. And a few moments go by as he's not, he doesn't have his lights on, but he's, he's following this tractor trailer and he is told <clears throat> not to initiate the stop at all <clears throat> to just move on forget about it move on um and 
he doesn't listen. He stops the tractor trailer anyway. Um, the officer gets the tractor trailer driver out of the truck and proceeds to question him about what he's doing. Uh, he notices the government plates. What, who and what does he work for? What branch of the government? What's he got in the truck, you know? Um, this and that. The tractor trailer driver is not uh, your average tractor trailer driver. He is what Benjamin sees as being coached to really deal with this issue if ever had to. You know, he immediately kind of doesn't go on the offensive, but is on the defensive very quickly. And, you know, pretty much says, you know, I thought you were told to drop this. I thought you were told not to pull me over, which pops Ben's curiosity immediately. Um, he radios in to the substation and says, listen, I did pull this truck over. It was, you know, kind of, he was driving kind of funny right after I was told not to pull it over, but I did <clears throat> because it did, you know, was driving very um, dangerously. He used some bullshit excuse. Um, but, you know, this guy knows that I wasn't supposed to pull him over. What's going on? And the substation commander gets on the radio. It's no longer the operator or dispatch and says, listen, drop it. Get the hell back to the substation. Just drop it. Move on. So he's about ready to do that. And he hears some kind of scuffling and what he thought was growls and kind of like a, a snarl from the back of the truck, which piqued his curiosity immediately even more. Um, he notices that the truck driver is on his cell phone. And as he's walking over, the truck driver puts his phone in his pocket and just stands there and uh, Benjamin says, listen, you know, I've, what's in the truck? Do you have, you know, are you guys transporting animals? What's going on? You know, I hear something in this back of the truck. Open the truck. Open it now. What do you have in there? And he knows that he's doing something not illegal, but he knows that he's, there's going to be repercussions for what? By blatantly disobeying orders. He already knows. The driver of the truck states to him, you know, I don't have the keys to the back of it. Uh, if you've got bolt cutters, go ahead and open it. But my boss or the person that I work directly under is going to be here shortly. Um, you can take it up with him. But you were told not to pull me over. What gives? I'm not breaking any laws. You know, you're kind of out of your jurisdiction. Which he's not. He's not out of his jurisdiction at all. He's in Nebraska. He's a Nebraska state or highway patrol officer. So, you know, it's like a state trooper. You're telling a state trooper, hey, you're out of your league, bud, in his own state. No. So that kind of pisses Benjamin off a little bit. And he, you know, says, all right, we'll wait. We'll wait for your boss to get here. Within 15 minutes from him putting his phone in his pocket, somewhere out of thin air because there is no military base within 15 minutes away um 
via helicopter, via vehicle, car, truck, whatever. But within 15 minutes, two blacked helicopters land. Uh, a military kind of big wig gets out of the helicopter. He's accompanied by armed, what appears to be military soldiers but they don't look like soldiers there's no bat there's no ranks there's nothing even the big wig he didn't have any bars he didn't have any stripes he had an american flag um and he was you could quite seriously tell that he was the one in charge the other soldiers were armed with um M force, so they're not. You know, it, it's really he's kind of screwed. You know, if shit goes sideways, he's he's outmanned, outgunned, and he's screwed. <clears throat> and he's already told not to initiate the stop. So the big wig. Looks at him and says, you know, we don't have to answer to you. Your supervisor has already told you to leave well enough alone. I happen to have him right here on the radio. If you want to proceed, you know, he can deal with you. We are moving on. We are, you know, not going to be here. You're going to have to deal with the shit you just created. Hands him his radio. Um, he starts talking. Ben starts talking to his supervisor. And his supervisor directly says, You were told to not initiate the stop. This is the third time now. Um, get back to the substation. And... You know, let these people go about their business. They are above my pay grade, above your pay grade. Get the hell back here now. He hands the big wig his radio back. And as he's walking towards his vehicle, his patrol vehicle, he hears another scuffling and some snarls. And what he thought was kind of like a metal clanking on the side of the the inside of the truck. Uh, almost sounded like what chains would sound like. He turned and looked at the truck, at the trailer, looked at the big wig, the truck, the tractor trailer guy's already in the truck getting ready to go, and gets back in his patrol vehicle. And starts heading back to his substation. At his substation, he is immediately reprimanded by his supervisor. But not only is his supervisor there, but his supervisor's supervisor is there. And he is uh, put on leave for two weeks, unpaid leave for two weeks. And, you know, told to figure his shit out. Come back in two weeks and forget this ever happened. So during his unpaid two-week vacation, um, he's not married. He doesn't have family except for his sister and his parents. He decides to... Uh, just kind of head out that way and look around. Um, being that he is into the whole kind of uh, government conspiracy, dumbs, MUFON, UFO, etc., he picks up a disposable camera and he wants to go out and take some photos. He automatically 
already comes to the conclusion of not using his cell phone um, because he has heard through different, you know, experiences and such through if you if you research like UFO and any kind of uh, experience that people take photos of stuff they're not supposed to take. Um, the government has supposedly hacked their computers, their phones, and deleted these pro the photos of proof. So he's like, well, screw it. I'm going to take some photos. I'm going to use a disposable camera and, you know, get some photos of what I find out there. So the first couple of days he goes throughout these lakes. And like I said, there is about 10 lakes out there. And he drives off of 181 uh, onto this dirt road, which he can go all around these lakes and look around. And that's what he's doing. So about nine days in to his vacay, he stumbles upon um, this area called Christ Lake. And what he sees around Christ Lake is he notices that there are some tractor trailer tracks that kind of just abruptly stop in a random place and then take off kind of like it turned around and then went away. Uh, he notices boots, boot tracks, and he notices these very large canine tracks. Uh, some what he believed to be quadruped and some what he believed to be bipedal. And the tracks are roughly eight inches by eight inches. So they are a large set of tracks. What is that about that? Just a good sized track. Um, he takes a few pictures and goes, you know, he, he heads out before dark because he's freaked out. One, um, and he kind of knows that he shouldn't be out there. He kind of has that feeling like, you know, if I get caught doing this by my higher ups, I'm screwed. I might not have a job. <clears throat> so a couple days go by and he is coming up to. Uh, the day that he's supposed to return back to work. And he heads back out to this Christ, locate, Christ Lake location. And he starts to look around. And mysteriously, the tracks that he had taken pictures of are now gone. Uh, it, it looks like almost like a wind had blown over the surface of this land and kind of just smoothed it all out. Yet, days prior, there were tracks fresh, not fresh, but there. Um, and he's got the, he's got these prints on film. He has not developed his camera yet. <clears throat> so, he's looking around Chrysler and he hears this kind of growling snarl, this loud growling snarl. Uh, he's right out in the open. And where he's standing, he kind of is looking around. And he looks toward the lake. And there's this kind of little island that is pretty close to the shore um, in Christ Lake. And he sees this kind of bipedal dog man standing on this lake, on this island in this lake, just kind of looking at him, like dead at him, staring at him. Um, 
the island is not very big at all. I mean, we're not talking like Hawaii Island or we're not even talking like campable Island. Maybe you could put a tent up there, uh, but maybe not. I mean, it's not a place where this random dog man is standing, just staring at him, growling. Uh, he starts to kind of back up a little and he's going to take a photo of it. But as he puts his camera up, he takes a snap and this thing is in the water swimming at him. He jumps into his personal vehicle and starts to drive towards home. You know, he's about 35, 40 minutes um, outside of civilization right now. So he starts to drive home. He goes in to work a couple days later and drops his camera off to get the film developed. Um, he drops it off in uniform thinking like, Hey, you know, I'm in uniform. I'm going to drop my camera off. No one will mess with me or my film because I'm in uniform. And he was right because when he got his, he got his copies back uh, a day later, he could see these pictures of these prints. He saw the photos of the tractor trailer prints, um, the boots and such. And he laid like, he laid, would lay his phone by the tracks to show you how big these like canine paw tracks are. Um, so he gets done with work that day, uh, contacts his sister and or yeah, his sister and brother-in-law and says, you know, I've got these crazy photos. Um, I want to show them to you next time you come into state, you know, come see me. I want to show you these, or maybe I'll come, out and see you in a couple weeks on my day off and show you what I got. So <clears throat> he's got a safe in his home um, where he puts his service uh, pistol and, you know, money, safety, you know, jewels, whatever, you know, just whatever you put in your safe. And he puts his photos in that safe. And he... Heads into work, um, goes into work, comes home, nothing, nothing for a couple days. Um, he gets done with shift, and he gets out of out of you know out of the substation and starts heading back to home. And he's driving home, and he realizes like this is weird. This car's kind of fouling me he's not he's not in uh his patrol vehicle he's in his own personal vehicle um and he just sees this suv fouling him and as he turns off to go into his uh development that he lives in because he lives in this like little or lived in this little sub development the, the vehicle just goes right past. So nothing. He doesn't think anything of it. But he does. And he gets in home. Takes his pistol off. Goes to put it in his safe. And realizes that his safe is open. Now when he walked into his house. He used his key. To open his door. There was no signs of anyone breaking into his home at all his front door was locked the safe was functionable because he you know was looking at it and it wasn't broken it wasn't broken into or it was broken into but it was not damaged there was no damage he then um Calls, calls it in and says, hey, someone broke into my house. Can I get some prints? I'd like to see who broke into my house. 
and they do a complete workup of his home, front door, back door, you know, everywhere that if someone broke into his home, they would touch going to his safe. To print the safe, nothing. Not a fingerprint that does not belong to him, you know, himself and whoever he told what might be in my house, but no one else would touch my safe except me. And sure enough, the only prints on his safe is his. Yet his safe <clears throat> was wide open and nothing else was missing except the photos. <clears throat> he then kind of doesn't really chalk it up to anything other he knows what's going on but he's playing the he's playing the idiot to his higher ups and such and about 2 months later throughout the 2 months he notices that periodically there will be an SUV parked outside of his house at night and usually around the time that he would be unwinding on his computer um you know surfing the web looking up whatever deep underground military bases looking up conspiracy so, you know, when he'd go out to his kitchen, he'd look out and he'd see this SUV just parked randomly in front of his house. And he's like, what the fuck is going on? <clears throat> he had went outside to address the, and the SUV drove off. No plates, no plates on the SUVs. They would just drive off. Blacked out plate or blacked out SUV. Blacked out windows, no plates, just gone. So he then speaks to his higher ups about it. Hey, you know, like my house was broken into. Now I've got these random SUVs out in front of my house. Does this have anything to do with what happened a couple of months ago? And they, they pretty much... Play it like he's making this up. You know, like, what are you talking about? Like, why would anybody be messing with you? You let it be. You know, you didn't pursue it. Just drop it. Let it go. But he can't because he keeps seeing them. He eventually decides to move um, right outside of the area where his sister and brother law brother-in-law live outside of the state and you know puts his two weeks in and everything and says you know i got family emergency i'm gonna i gotta live by my sister you know and my my parents um i need to i need to you know but when i do get there I'm probably going to pursue law enforcement. Can I get, you know, a good, you know, good word from you guys when I get a new job? And he does. He does. And he works in law enforcement, but in a different kind of agency uh, or field and hoping that he can find out more about <clears throat> what's going on and do more about what's going on. Um, he is happy with the decision that he made to relocate and to work for a different uh, state law enforcement agency, but he really hasn't found much of anything to correlate with what happened in Nebraska while he was working there. Um, he said that to his brother-in-law. His brother-in-law said, you know, I think he may contact you. 
I'm going to let him know that, you know, I had a great conversation with you. You were very welcoming and, you know, a decent guy to talk with. So I'm going to let him know. And, you know, I just said, listen, if he wants to talk with me, you have my phone number already. You know, let him give him my number. He doesn't have to email me. Give him my number. Just let him know, hey, text Text Jeff beforehand and text him, text me who he is so I will respond um, to his phone call. Like, hey, this is Benjamin, Chris's brother-in-law. I'm going to be calling you. Look for this number. Okay. And then I'll answer. Uh, since being in the state that he now lives in and his new uh, position in law enforcement that he has not had any kind of high, high strangeness. He has not heard of anything uh, new coming from the state that he lives in, but he is still looking into what occurred uh, at the Crescent Lake National Wildlife Refuge that day and the days following. Um, Was that truck heading to a deep underground military base located in Nebraska? So that's the question. Was that, was that tractor trailer heading to a deep underground military base? Was there dogmen or was there like a super soldier? What was in that tractor trailer? Um, he did hear snarling, he did hear growling, and he heard chains moving. About a week, two weeks later, he sees that dog man on that <clears throat> very small island in this lake called Christ Lake. Uh, his brother-in-law and he has decided to sometime this summer go out that way again um, and look for some more clues about what is going on out that way. But he believes 100% that yes, there is through his, through his own research and comparatively where the map of these dumbs throughout the, the country are and a United States map, it correlates to right where that where he was and what happened would be a dumb. There would be a dumb there. Uh, could it have been super soldiers? Could it have been genetically engineered super soldiers? I don't think they would be growling, so I'm thinking dog man. Dog man or like what Victor would tell us, werewolves. Um, either way, something crazy is going on there. And I think it's interesting that it all, it all kind of fell all the high strangeness fell upon him in this area called Christ Lake. You know, randomly there are about 10 other lakes, maybe even more. Some are small, some are bigger. <clears throat> but for it to happen in this Crescent Lake National Wildlife Refuge, could have happened anywhere, but right there, he sees a dog man on this island on Christ Lake. Doesn't that seem a little strange? To me, it does. So hopefully he calls and talks with me. Um, I did let his brother-in-law know that I do have a voice distorter. I used it on Brad so he can distort his voice. 
um, because I'd really like to have him share exactly like what the dog man look like and etc. cetera. Cause I, this is a, you know, this is not, this is secondhand. I'm getting it from his brother-in-law from him. And I think it'd be best if we heard it, you know, firsthand account. So anyway, this is that, uh, map of the dumps throughout the United States. All right, so that was the map of the deep underground military bases all throughout the United States um, with tunnels in 1978. And I don't know if you guys can read it uh, from your perspective, but it does say unfinished 1978. And... From that map, Chris and his brother-in-law, Ben, really feel like, hey, there is a deep underground military base out there. Look at the map. Look where this went down. And look at what else happened, cause and effect, him pulling that tractor trailer over. But... That park ranger or game warden was the one who saw the tractor trailer and thought it'd be suspicious to be going out towards these lakes randomly where there are not a lot of, you know, there's no, like I said, mini malls. There's nothing really. There's a couple of cemeteries and, you know, whatnot, but nothing to where government plated tractor trailer would be going to. And then to turn on to a dirt road off of Route 181. Or, yeah, 181. So where would it be going other than where he saw the tracks leading up to Christ Lake? And how strange is it that they would put a deep underground military base near a lake called Christ Lake? That would be what our government would do. That is how sick and twisted they are with this alien agenda, this manipulation, manipulative, you know, hide it right under their nose, guys. That way when they find it, oh, we can just dismiss the people and make them out like they're crazy. They do it all the time. They, Some guy finds something. He announces it to the public. The next thing you know, he is made to look crazy and institutionalized. That's our government. Well, there you have it, folks. Some just terrifying experience right there. Just shows how dirty and dangerous our government really is and the ties they make with the agenda. I hope you all enjoyed today's upload as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. I'd like to thank you all for supporting the channel. It is, after all, your support that keeps this channel growing and going. And honestly, what gives people a chance and a place to share their experiences and theories judgment-free, just simply treated with the respect that we all deserve. Thank you. Everyone stay safe, happy, healthy, and ever vigilant, keeping an eye on our children, pets, family, and friends. These creatures are real. 
They are out there and they are definitely dangerous. Share this information with those you love and care about and it may just help save their lives someday. Until next time, never stop asking questions. Never stop searching for the truth. God bless.